Hi! If you've seen the title of this video, I'm currently 33 weeks pregnant and it has been quite a journey. So while my second and third trimesters are being, you know, they have the usual fatigue but they're pretty normal, I feel like my first trimester was so extreme <laughs> in terms of the level of fatigue I was feeling and the sudden drop of energy that I also felt that I kind of need to tell you guys about that experience because in terms of productivity, it was an eye-opener for me. Okay, so this is basically what happened. In my first trimester, although I wasn't having any you know, serious physical symptoms, I was suffering from extreme fatigue. So I went from being someone who was sleeping seven hours a day to someone who had to sleep between 12 to 14 hours per day to even function properly. And while all of this was happening, all of my blood tests look pretty normal. So my doctor just told me this was something I basically had to get through. The problem was I had to survive this extreme level of fatigue while working two jobs at the same time. And because I was in my first trimester, I couldn't really tell anyone about it. And then to make everything worse, I was suffering from major heartburn and kind of stomach conditions. So I really had to cut down on coffee, which made extreme fatigue even worse. And while I know that these are all normal symptoms for pregnancy and then there are so many people going through symptoms that are way worse than this, I couldn't help but thinking, how are pregnant women supposed to handle a typical job or in my case a job and a business and are supposed to manage all of the feelings that come with pregnancy and cope with day-to-day -day demands while feeling like this? So in terms of productivity and what we think about productivity, how are we supposed to handle a transformation like this that comes so quickly and that is also quite unpredictable? So I want to kind of give you my experience on how I was able to cope with this stage and how I was able to help myself. So the first thing and the most important thing I had to do was cut myself some slack. And when I mean cutting myself some slack, I really mean it. Before I got pregnant, and you probably know this because this is something that I do talk about a lot on my channel, I did a lot of kind of strict calendar blocking. So between around 8 a.m. and kind of 6 p.m., my day was scheduled almost to the minute and I loved it. It really worked for me. It made me feel productive. I was doing a lot of work. And it worked really hell for me, even in terms of my mental health. However, when I got to this stage in my life, calendar blocking was a big no-no. As soon as I understood that calendar blocking was not going to be the time management method that I was able to use while feeling like this, I had to kind of look back and brainstorm a little bit what are the organization methods, the time management methods that can actually help me in this stage? And my answer was pretty simple. I distinctly remember in one of my lunch breaks in my day job, I left for the lunch break. I went to a bookshop and I bought myself a moleskin journal. And this moleskin journal was um, a one day per page type of journal. And what I started doing was jotting down three tasks every single day. And if I was able to accomplish those three tasks, I already felt really proud of myself. Another thing I quickly realized during this stage was that the smallest, tiny little details were fundamental to keep me sane. Because I was feeling this extreme fatigue, I also remember that everything was so difficult to get through. Simple things like fixing my hair, putting on some makeup, dressing in the morning, eating and drinking water, stretching, making my bed in the morning, those were all challenges. And this became even more problematic once I was given the green light to start working from home around week 10 of my pregnancy. Basically because I didn't have that obligation to 
put on some clothes in the morning, put on some makeup, I feel like I was becoming kind of a slob. And the problem was not that I was cutting myself some slack in terms of how I was treating myself. The problem was that I was kind of getting depressed from going from a stage where I was energized, productive and feeling good about myself to a point in my life where even the tiny little things were so difficult to do. And with this, the problem was my mental health started declining as well. As I stopped taking care of myself, I also stopped caring about how my day went and I basically became kind of a couch potato and I wanted only to get through the minimum of my obligations and the things I had to do and I was feeling terrible about it because that's definitely not the person I usually am. So the tiny little things became priorities for me. Getting ready to work, even if I was working from home, was now a priority. I literally had a reminder on my phone to remind me that after eating, I had to put some clothes on. And I always remembered I had to eat, otherwise I was going to throw up in the morning. So that was a very easy way to build that habit. But at the same time, it was something I actually had to force myself to do. As soon as I started building that habit, I couldn't even believe the major change in my well-being that that tiny little self-care routine started making for me. Another thing I had to do was definitely ignore any kind of secondary or self-imposed deadlines. While of course I wasn't able to do this on any projects or tasks or deadlines related to my day job because of course people are relying on me, I had to do that for my own personal individual projects. For instance, my coaching website was supposed to go live in the summer and I had to postpone that for December. I also had to realize I had to cut back on other things I was working on in parallel. So I was not able to post on Patreon. I was not able to promote my coaching business. I was doing YouTube because that's definitely my main business related activity. Uh, but even Instagram, I stopped posting for a couple of months. So I really had to realize, okay, so what's essential for me right now? What do I need to keep working on? And what will have to be temporarily suspended until I get better? However, I must admit that this felt like a major failure for me. And I was so disappointed in myself for... No, not being able to keep up with the tasks that I was setting myself to do and not being able to accomplish any of the goals that I set for 2022. However, it was also Im obviously impossible for me to keep working on so many things because professionally, I was barely surviving right now. Another thing I had to do was accept that leisure was going to look different for me from now on. I've always been a reader and reading books has always been my preferred choice of entertainment. I always felt better by reading books than watching TV. However, I could not stay focused during this time. I remember that I was so desperate um, trying to read a book from start to finish that I started rereading Atomic Habits, which is such a ridiculously easy book to read and I had already read it in the past and I could not even get through Atomic Habits during this stage. So basically I had to accept that during the summertime, which coincided with my first trimester, television was going to be it in terms of leisure. I basically just binged watch Korean dramas all summer long <laughs> because I could not do anything else. and. I did enjoy watching those, those TV shows and at the same time, they were not making me feel like, you know, I, I was still able to keep myself entertained because I had something to do and something I like to do. But at the same time, I had to remember this is going to be it in terms of entertainment for now. And of course that, as all of this was going on, I still had to prepare for pregnancy and birth meanwhile. And this is also something I want to film a completely separate video about, but creating a master list of everything I had to think about, to prepare, to study beforehand was really helpful because it was, you know, it allowed me to know exactly what are the things I need to care of 
before baby arrives. I also try to read several books on pregnancy, but <laughs> once again, I purchased the books, could not read the books for three months. And you know, all in all, I really have no conclusion for this video. I don't have any real strategies or tips to help you with this because I barely survived myself, but I can tell you that self-respect uh, is a big part of it. And I also wanted to share my experience because I feel like I'm in this privileged place where I speak about productivity and being energized and motivated a lot. So every time I come across a stage in my life where I'm feeling the opposite of what I preach. <laughs> I feel like I have this kind of duty to tell you about my experience, how I dealt with it, and also how I felt. Because these ruts, these slumps are all pretty normal and we have to embrace them in order to also, you know, feel grateful for the times where we have peaks of energy and we feel specially motivated. Also, giving yourself some grace during this time is not only important, it's kind of fundamental. And also understanding that if you are someone who is going through something like this because of kind of normal reasons like I did, it's important to remember, instead of feeling frustrated, feeling that, you know, this life stage is not going to be eternal. A lot of people suffer from chronic illnesses and chronic fatigue, and they feel like this every single day. So I was grateful enough to remember that I was not going to feel like this for forever. So I had to manage and cope with the situation instead of just feeling like I couldn't handle it and could not, you know, survive it and just feeling frustrated because of it. And also, you know, embracing a time of fewer commitments can also be kind of a blessing in disguise. You know, how many times in your life do you actually have this you know, self-authorization to actually slack. So this is one of those times you have this authorization. So use it. It's better for you. Try as much as possible to take advantage of it. And also know that you're not alone because I went through this. A lot of women go through the same and a lot of people go through these slumps and these periods where they feel really fatigued, they feel burned out and it's normal. And we all have to find our coping mechanisms to survive these stages. Also, people ask me a lot about motivation, you know, mental health, productivity. So I've basically compiled a lot of my answers, my general answers regarding these particular topics in a full video. You can get access to that full video on Nebula, the only place where it's available. All of the videos I post on Nebula are ad-free and sponsor-free and they're available there before they're available on YouTube. All you have to do is search for this icon to know you're watching a video that still isn't available on YouTube and this icon to know you're watching something that will never be available anywhere else. And of course, I'm not alone on Nebula. There are many other creators there too with video catalogs that have the same perks as mine has. You can find Thomas Frank, Ali Abdal, and many people from the STEM community. And the good news is you can get Nebula for free if you subscribe for Curiosity Stream, who is sponsoring today's video. And this is like a two-in-one package. With Curiosity Stream, you can watch high quality documentaries on the go, on science, history, psychology, you name it. I actually have my own list of favorites, which I will show you right here. And because we're having a sale right now, you can get access to both platforms for 42% off. That's $11.59 for a whole year. That's less than $1 a month for thousands of documentaries and videos. And the only thing you have to do is click the link below, sign up for CuriosityStream, and that's it. As simple as that. So go to curiositystream.com slash studycorner to start watching today. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and I will see you next week. Bye guys.